Michael Lorton with Utah Political Capital here with Martel Superintendent Martel Menlove. I want to ask you, Superintendent, about the successes in the education area this year. There were many, but specifically the ones that are on your mind now. Well, I think the major successes are uh, $120 million of new funding that's going into public education, recognizing that some of that will be uh, simply to provide ongoing services to 10,300 new students who we anticipate to be in the system next year. Also a 2.5% increase in the value of the weighted pupil unit, which is the major funding source for public education. For those that don't know what that means, could you give us just kind of a layman's uh, explanation of the weighted pupil unit? Sure. The weighted pupil unit is a, a dollar value that is somewhat equivalent to the number of students, but you get additional weighted pupil units for uh, special education students, you get additional weighted pupil units for some class size things. Uh, there's there's, there's a, several things that are, are funded off of the weighted pupil units, so uh, although there's 600, over 600,000 students in Utah, there's almost 700,000 weighted pupil units distributed annually. So it has to do with the census, specifically in districts, and how those portion out, is that correct? That's accurate. So a 2.5% increase basically uh, results in a 2.5% increase in many of the line items in the public education budget. Um, recognizing that 2.5% increase will have to cover increased costs for districts and charters, uh, particularly uh, noted this year is increased costs for uh, participation in the Utah retirement system, which will take basically 1% of that 2.5%. So that leaves 2.5% for local districts and charters to hopefully look at compensation, maybe look at benefits, uh, expanding of some programs, some other things. not a lot of money, uh, but hopefully enough to allow for at least some options at the local level and how they would like to expend that money. Uh, never have we seen a decrease in the value of the weighted pupil unit, although sometimes it's taking money from what they call below the line to above the line and there's some, some transfers. Uh, but I would, I would hope that the legislators uh, accept my appreciation, my thanks for their great work, and uh, I, you know, they, they really have tried, to, they've really tried to do what's best for both higher ed and public education in the state of Utah. What specifically then, as you uh, kind of uh, draw the line now on what's been done here at the legislature, what do you see as beyond the weighted pu pupil unit and their increases that were, uh, that were set up there in the budget, what do you see also were some specific successes that other people may not n necessarily know about? Well, I think a couple of things. Uh, a high priority with the State Board of Education this year was funding for some early intervention for some preschool and, and, and funding specifically towards those students who are most at risk. HB 96, that one. HB 96, uh, SB 43, I think is the number on Cinder Reed's bill dealing with intergenerational poverty, uh, the increased funding in Upstart and focusing that Upstart money more towards those students that we believe most at risk. Hopefully all of those things will have an impact on students not only being ready when they come to school, but hopefully we'll see that now as they are reading on grade level, basically by third grade, which is a great indicator of success for their next nine years in the public education system. Now, there, there was some debate, of course it's over now, but there was some debate about the fact that uh, some people felt that education in the home during those very tender years was more important than education by the, the system that would now be funded for pre-K under these two uh, mechanisms here. Your comments on that? Well, I would never diminish the important role of the homes and parents uh, working with their, their students. We know when we look at students who come to school, we can recognize where those homes have had that influence. What we do know is that for a variety of reasons, uh, there are groups of students that come to us that are not as prepared as others. And we believe that if we can do some things early on, uh, have that preparation there, the success of those students feel immediately in kindergarten will again carry over into second and third grade. And once we get that success there, we believe it'll carry over and impact the rest of their high school experience and ultimately lead, lead them to being more likely to go on to higher education, uh, end up with employment and jobs that are higher paying, and then again, turn around and pay back to society. 
President Niederhauser mentioned that maybe next year they would look a little more closely at, at uh, bilingual education and helping our students here in Utah, some of which have a great background in that because they learn languages in their home and then come to learn English, of course, maybe even as a second language in their public school system. But tell me more about what, how you think of bil bilingual education and immersion programs. Well, we have two things we're dealing with. One is those students who come to us who do not speak English is their primary language. So we're, we're, there's some additional funding, there's some additional technology that's available to those students, and I think needs to be. And again, as you look at these programs we've already started, we've already talked about, uh, some of those students that are coming unprepared are those who do not have English as a primary language. The other issue is what we typically talk about is dual immersion. And Utah leads the nation in dual immersion. We have incredible dual immersion programs in our state. These are students typically elementary students, but now moving into middle, high, middle and high school classes now, where students receive instruction a portion of their day in a, in a language other than English. So you'll walk into classes in the state of Utah where you see instruction happening in Chinese, Spanish, French, Portuguese, German, I hope I haven't named all of them, but I'm not sure I have. And the goal in those programs is to be both bilingual and biliterate, is that correct? No question. And again, recognizing the the, the global nature of what we need to do in preparing students and uh, trying to pre prepare those students to be successful not only here in Utah but literally around the world as they have an opportunity to learn those additional language skills. We thank you for your efforts here on behalf of the state. This has been Superintendent Martel Manlove. I want to thank you again for joining us today. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Bye now.